Getting an engineering degree is one of the hardest degrees to get. So if you're struggling to keep up with endless assignments, staying up late at night, kind of questioning your whole life, you know, all that kind of fun stuff, I get it. So in today's video, I'll share some tips with you of how I got through engineering school and was able to maintain a 3.5 undergrad GPA and 3.8 master's GPA. And I was able to do this while still maintaining a social life and really enjoying my time in college. So if that sounds good to you, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. So now let's get into it. So tip number one, get very clear on your goal. If you don't have a clear direction of where you're trying to go with your academic career, it doesn't help you focus on what's really important. So say you want to like go further into academics or you want to get your master's and you want to go to maybe a certain school. A lot of times if you're going down that route, GPA will become very important to help give you the best chance of being able to do that. Or like for me within civil engineering, I realized after I did my internship that I really wanted to go into the construction field. So I was able to tailor a lot of my senior year classes to that curriculum to help give me a little bit more background before I started working. So this way you can tailor your classes and your curriculum to help support your goals. But if you don't really know what direction you're going in or not clear on that, there become so many options out there that just become too many juggles to bowl. No, no, that's wrong. Too many balls to juggle. So, so some ways to do this, and we'll talk about internships a little bit later. I think that's a great one. Sometimes talking to your professors and they can help if they were in the industry as well, or getting out there, meeting new people, talking to companies, that kind of thing. And just in general in life, you wanna have that person that you're kind of trying to emulate your life after, because then again, if you don't have that direction, it's just very hard to move in a certain path. So tip number two, you wanna make some friends. And I'll say for sure, going through engineering school solo is substantially harder than going through it with friends or at least acquaintances or colleagues. And when you really think about it, it's going to be like that in the real world as well. You're going to want to be able to work with people, you're gonna to wanna to be able to form relationships, and there's no better time than in engineering school when the curriculum is already so hard. Having friends or just people to go through stuff with actually makes you a better student. Because sometimes you'll be learning from others, but sometimes you'll be teaching others. And in both situations, you'll improve your knowledge. And when you're with a group of people, you also realize that the same problems you're going through, they're also going through. So you just feel less alone and you realize that kind of everyone's going through the same stuff. So I know maybe it's hard, but just, just try your best. Find one or two people that you can bounce ideas off of, someone you enjoy being around. For me, it kind of starts with where do you sit in the classroom? I was a guy that really sat in the back corner. People who sit in the back corner sometimes think alike. And you can kind of start there and start growing your group out from there. Also, having friends gives you access to check accounts. I'm just kidding. But in all seriousness, going through engineering school with a solid group of people will make it easier for you to gain knowledge, retain knowledge, learn. It's just the best way, I think, to go through school. So tip number three, learn concepts instead of just purely memorizing things. Sure, it's good to memorize formulas and whatever, but to really understand the core concepts is what will help your studying. By understanding the fundamentals, you can reason your way through problems. And that has helped me so many times on tests. There have been honestly times during engineering where I was like really figuring things out during the test and I wouldn't suggest this for anyone, but it's because I really leaned on just understanding the fundamentals, the basics, so that when the complex problems came up on the test, I just was able to lean on that and because I had a good understanding of concepts, it helped me get through those tougher problems when the test came. If I were to just memorize without understanding the basic concepts, I think it would have been a lot harder and I wouldn't have been able to pivot and I hate saying learn through the test, but that's sometimes what really happened. And that to me is kind of the beauty of engineering in itself as well. Like you can actually get partial credit on tests, but because it's a whole system, a whole understanding of problems, Whereas other things are just pure memorization and just regurgitating it on the test. So like that's kind of the good and bad thing of engineering but for me it really worked out because it helped me really break down things to basics to then apply when I got to the test. So again, one thing to memorize but understand the concepts. So tip number four and this is something that worked for me, may not work for everybody or maybe I'm the only one that it worked for, but I put a lot of focused effort like right before my tests. So my system that I had, and because this is just the way my brain works, I'm not a guy that studies, you know, for two to three to four weeks over time. Or maybe I just don't believe that it just retains very well. So what I would do is so to say my test was at like 10 in the morning. I would just go into the library if you have 
a 24 hour library. Just go to the library at like three or four in the morning and then just cram as much stuff into my brain so that I could just spread all that knowledge back onto the test. And again, this might not work for everybody. This is something that was more specific to me, but that worked for me in college. So like, I just wasn't that guy that spent all that time studying for weeks and weeks on end. I just knew if I hit it hard right before the test, it would kind of work out. So in college too, I had a part-time job. So I didn't really have all the time in the world to just study, but I also did enjoy some social aspects of college. Not, you know, like, you know, this kind of thing, but like I had friends, I wanted to go out, you know, go eat, do things. So me personally, I didn't want to just spend my whole time studying. So this was my way of kind of getting around it and maybe I could have done better, but it worked relatively well for me. So if that's something that might work for you, go ahead and try it. And if this, and, and then again, if this is the way that you take tests, hey, you're not alone. I did that too. So tip number five, don't be afraid to ask for help. So then again, whether it's in your friend group or maybe you're just starting out, asking your professors and TAs for help can really be a no brainer. I also used to think of it like this, like, you know, if someone's a professor in the field, I hope so, but they must really like what they're doing. So if you're asking them for help or asking them to explain and showing a genuine interest in the material, more often than not, they will take the time to help you. So this is really good for a couple of reasons. One, you get the clarity that you need in order for you to move forward and learn more and just be a better student. But two, this can also help create a relationship between you and your professor, you and your TA, and say you do go and try to get your master's or you do want a letter of recommendation for something later on. You will have that relationship with that professor that's very real and different from other students who don't have that kind of interaction. So like for me, when I applied to grad school, I needed two letters of recommendation. And it would have been weird if I just randomly asked my professor for a letter of rec when I didn't have any sort of one-on-one -on -one talking that you know could have that personal touch to make an actual good letter of rec. And asking for help and admitting that you don't know is one of the best skills that you can have. And I feel like that limits a lot of people in their life when they don't have that skill or can't have that humility to ask for help. So the sooner you can start training that muscle, the better. Tip number six. Find out and take the GPA boosting classes. So like, I, I understand, I get it. You know, sometimes people say like, you know, college, you know, you should learn, you should experience, you should what, I, I get it, like fine. But if you pay for college, to me, the purpose of college is to set yourself up for your career, set yourself up for your future. You can get a breadth of knowledge later when you're making money, when you have a job, but when you're paying tens of thousands of dollars to get your degree, you wanna be able to come out with the best chance of you getting a job. And unfortunately right now, one of the only ways to do that is just to have a good GPA. So companies use that as a measuring stick. If you wanna go into academics later, they all look at your GPA. Engineering in itself is already so difficult. You want most of your mental focus Focus to be on those classes so if you again if you have some friends if you know some people you can find out which and you know people know this right but you want to be able to find those classes that take a little of your effort but still boost help boost your GPA so that later in life you can set yourself up so that you can have the best opportunities that you can so for example like one of the guys that I knew was killing it in all his engineering classes and he thought hey I'll take photography but the photography professor was you know, you know you're with a bunch of people that like love or are good photography or they're gonna major in it he actually was struggling in that class he was killing it in his engineering classes but couldn't wrap his head around taking a blurry focused artistic picture and like the last thing you want is for something that's not related to the field that you're going to to bring down your GPA if you're taking any classes outside of that the only thing it should be doing is boosting your GPA and tip number seven get an internship to get some clarity and if you watch this channel I am you will know that I am big on internships my own personal story is that I really thought I was gonna go into structural engineering I thought that you know just this mathy brain of mine just wanted to do calculations just nerd out and do some things and it wasn't until I did my internship in construction that I realized that no this is what I really want to do and again like I talked about earlier I tailored all my courses in senior year after I took that internship in order to have a lot of that background so more of the surveying the construction you know roads all those means and methods and you know I did take my core structural classes like reinforced concrete structural steel but I didn't 
focus my whole senior year on it. I didn't do my whole capstone on it. And it made my senior year so much more enjoyable because it felt like all my coursework was preparing me or at least trying to prepare me for my job that was waiting for me after college. So again, doing an internship helps you get clarity on what you want, helps you get your foot in the door for your job after college, which I would think is mostly the goal. And honestly, if you kill it at your internship, it just puts so much less emphasis on your GPA, right? And like spending all that time. And again, you know, you don't want to fail your classes, but really, if you kill it at your internship, they all they want to make sure is that you pass because they know that, you know, if you can do the work and you prove to them in the internship that you can do the work, in my opinion, they could care less about how your coursework goes for the rest of the year as long as you get that degree. So it just takes on all this pressure from you, you know, be from a clarity standpoint, from getting a job, you know, all these things. So to me, if you can, put more time and effort towards getting that internship, getting your foot in the door, getting that clarity, it would be one of the best uses of your time in college. And tip number eight, if you enjoy it, stick with it. Just having an engineering degree can open up a lot of doors for you. So yeah, maybe maybe you're struggling, maybe you know you don't feel like you have it, you don't feel like you belong. If you can stick through it and just get that degree, it'll open up a lot of doors. And maybe you won't have the best jobs, but you will likely have a job. You will be able to get your foot in the door maybe at a smaller company, or maybe you're at a smaller school if you're going to academics. But that's all you need is that little breakthrough and you can build upon that in your career. The industry is dying for people that are passionate and just want to work. So you can use that to your advantage, right? And just understand, you know, I love this work. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And yeah, maybe if my GPA is not the greatest, I can work my way, learn the ropes, learn the systems, and just work my way up the ladder. And you'll find once you graduate, you know, grades don't matter. No one's flaunting their GPA. No one's talking about what they did in school, right? It's, am I executing on my work? And am I helping the company? Or am I moving this research forward, right? It's, it's all about your output outputs and to me you get the best outputs when you're passionate about the work when you enjoy the process and you just enjoy being that type of engineer that'll take you so much farther because you're going to outlast everybody that is just doing it for either the money or the accolades or whatever so that's my my two cents and yeah maybe you don't have the path directly to stardom but if you just lean on that passion i truly believe that you'll be able to get to wherever you want to go so those are my eight tips for engineers. If you have any further questions or you want more clarity on any of these tips or you disagree with me and you think I'm silly, I would love to hear all of your thoughts in the comments below. And again, I know that I'm just a civil engineer and maybe you're doing another type of engineering, but I do think a lot of these concepts are applicable to all types of engineering or at least most of them. So I hope that this was helpful to you. So again, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one.